We are streaming worldwide. We've got a worldwide listening audience, Hawaiians around, you know, the country. And we also do the multimedia. We do video and we interface on social networking. So it's kind of, um, I, I'm excited to have this opportunity to talk to you and um, bring you onto the Songs of Sovereignty, our radio show. And that show is on kkcr.org on Wednesdays from 9 to 11 a.m., 10 years. We've been talking about our sovereignty and what our political status is. And um, I'm with Mililani Trask, who is running for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. And good morning. Thanks, good for, morning. thanks for letting me meet with you and have this opportunity to ask you some hard questions for our Kanakas that, um, you know, we're trying to get all Kanaka together to vote and to participate in our future. So thank you for the opportunity. Sure. And the first question that I had um, sent to you was, what is your definition or vision of an independent Hawaii? What does that mean to you? You know, I really consider the issue of independence to be a red herring. It is not our job to dictate to the Hawaiian nation. Okay. It is our job to work together as Hawaiians to make a strong Hawaiian nation, okay. and then to respect the right of that nation to declare independence in mm -hmm. our behalf. Okay. We have yet to build consensus on that point. In terms of independence, I have for 40 years asked the independence advocates, all of them, three questions. Number one, what is your strategic plan to get independence for our people from America? Mm -hmm. Number two, where are you in implementing the plan? And number three, what are the ramifications for this for Hawaiians and for our whole state, including non-Hawaiians? Mm -hmm. There are many Hawaiians who are asking, what happens to my social security, my benefits as a veteran, mm -hmm. my aid to family with mothers that have no husband and rely upon federal assistance. Mm -hmm. These are the kind of questions that an independent Hawaiian nation will answer. But when the questions are asked, the only response we get is resounding silence. Mm -hmm. Before we insist that the Hawaiian nation secede from the Union, we should first as Hawaiians create a strong nation that is capable of making that enunciation. And that is really our first goal. Fair enough, and I've watched you over the years really work hard on building that with the Kanaka community. I've seen yeah. it, so. We have now. I thought we had seven kingdoms. Recently, I was corrected on the internet that there are nine. Wow. Uh, some of these folks really have worked hard. They really mm -hmm. are proposing a different structure. People like Henry Noah, mm -hmm. uh, he's accomplished a great deal. Others, we never see them. Uh, we get pronouncements that come over the internet. Uh, but we don't have a problem with restoring a kingdom. The problem we have is that we have nine who cannot work together. Mm -hmm. I agree with you very much on that point. Um, the second question that I had posed to you, um, uh, fell by. We, and we can edit this, this up. This is going over the two minutes. That's all right, it's gonna be just fine. Um, So question number two, many people, you know, people, they talk, and there's a perception out there that you've traded sides. How do you respond to that? You know, those kinds of complaints and questions roll off my back. It's been my experience that those who talk a lot mm -hmm. are those who do the least. Mm -hmm. We are all best judged by what we have accomplished. Uh, some folks don't like my position with regards to the development of energy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a Hawaiian advocate and an attorney that spent years taking those cases to court. Because of the work we did in the Waiholi case, the Pele defense case, and for the Pash decision, we have protected and established Hawaiian rights. It was those cases that uh, forced the courts to allow Hawaiians to worship outside of the Ahupua'a. These things are significant accomplishments. Mm -hmm. uh, in, terms of, in terms of trading sides on issues like geothermal, let me advise all Hawaiians to find out what our human rights are. It took us 22 years fighting for them at the United Nations to establish them. Mm -hmm. We as Hawaiians have the right to develop our lands, territories, and resources to say how it shall be developed and whether or not our people should have a direct benefit. Mm -hmm. That is not only the case for land and water, 
that is also the case for geothermal, ocean tech, uh, wave energy, and all the other renewable energy resources of this state, which happen to be assets mm -hmm. of our peoples. Mm -hmm. uh, the old colonial uh, way of doing business, which is what we see now, the U.S. has a close military relationship with Israel. So Israel is invited to come to do business in Hawaii under a globalized model that brings no benefit to our people, that charges our people the highest rates for electricity in the United States. We think that's wrong. We think the time has come for Hawaiians to decide what energy we're going to develop and to ins insist, as we are doing, that there be a direct community benefit that there be money set aside for food security for our farmers in Puna and elsewhere. Uh, these are our obligations and responsibilities. For myself, as an attorney who worked on the Pele case, mm -hmm. I can say that we brought that case to protect Hawaiian rights to worship and gather. We won it, we took it all the way to the Supreme Court, and in the last 35 years, there has not been a single incident of a single Hawaiian or non-Hawaiian that was told that they could not worship Tutupele. There is no example of it. Now the Haole plaintiffs with their environmental supporters also brought litigation against geothermal. Mm -hmm. But unlike Hawaiians, they didn't go to the Supreme Court to shut down the factory. They decided to cut a deal to take a $2 million settlement. That is why their case was never litigated to an appropriate closure. Perhaps if they had taken the case as we did for our peoples, we would be seeing a different uh, outcome, mm -hmm. but they did not. One of the things I wanna say about this is that on the big island last year, we had two families, Hawaiian families with children, homes burnt down because HECO shut down their electricity and they had children and were trying to cook in the dark on a camp stove. Two families, two homes, two groups of Hawaiians who own geothermal resources, homes burning down. While HECO has an energy monopoly with a company that is a corporation transnational from Israel, we disagree with that. And we are the ones that will set the rules for developing. The cultural practitioners are the ones that won the case mm -hmm. for us. The named plaintiffs, Polly Kapu Deadman and Emmett Aluli, did not win. The court struck them down. Why? Because they talked a lot about Tutupele, but they didn't practice their culture on the land. Mm. They didn't worship there. They didn't gather food, <clears throat> they didn't pick lays, they didn't hunt pig. This is where we divide the true Hawaiian mm -hmm. from the Bala'awi Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. You don't talk religious practice, you worship the Akua on the Aina. If you do not, you deserve to lose. It's interesting to me that there are many who are critical of what we are doing but when we brought this case, when we marched, and I was there at the front of the march, it was the Kalahui Kupuna Bahine who led the march because the Pele defense, shall we say they were too afraid to get arrested. But the 60 and 70 year old Kupunas of Kalahui led that march and I walked with them as their attorney. I'm the one that was there to bail them out. They were there. Where are all the ones who are now critical? We did not see them at that time. Well, because of your efforts, I'm able to go visit Tutu Pele every time I go to Mokuo Keawe, and I really do appreciate having that right that, you know, that I can get access to go see my Tutu. Ta talk a little about, bit about when you Pash. Think about what happened 30 mm -hmm. years ago, there were many fewer halal that came. And it was difficult to go to worship at the volcano. They didn't really want to make a space for the dancers. But there was also a big question, and that is, should the members of the Halau, who are Japanese and Haole, be allowed to worship at the volcano? Our case has settled that question. 
When Hawaiians go to worship, it is not for the court or anyone else to tell them how they should pray or who they should pray with. This past year, we had over 2,000 dancers that came. Now the volcano assigns every halal a time to go to pray. They mm -hmm. accommodate it. And every dancer, male and woman, regardless if they're Hawaiian, is welcome to come to pray. And that is the way that it should be, I think. It is really a wonderful right that we have to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, I want to just have you talk a little bit about PASH. There are many Hawaiians who don't know even what that is, what the public access shoreline Hawaii rights are, what that means for us. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. The PASH case was the last in a series of three cases that really had a major impact on Hawaii, changing how our state understood the public trust obligation and protecting critical resources that were natural resources but cultural resources as well. The PASH case came about, and that stands for Public Access Shoreline Hawaii. Mm -hmm. It came about because there were two groups of people who were concerned about development at the shoreline. Those groups were Hawaiian practitioners who were going to the shoreline to fish, to gather, pick opihi and other such things. And some of them were uh, people who are going just to hike because the Alahele trails go around the mm -hmm. islands and many of the trails go to specific and special places, sacred places, heo mm -hmm. and other mm -hmm. places. But there were also many other people who were not Hawaiian and they were led by a guy named Jerry Rosti, uh, rabid environmentalist, a good man. He realized that there wasn't really a right for him and for other non-Hawaiians to use the trails, to have access to the shoreline. Because under our laws, going back to the time of the kingdom and before, the, those rights were vested in the indigenous practitioner, in the native tenant. What happened in the Pash case was we used our public trust law, but we also relied upon our traditional custom and usage laws that said that the trails were to be open for all of those who wish to access them. With that decision then opened up the right of all peoples to use the trails to come down to the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, those with money were purchasing all the oceanfront properties and they were prohibiting access for the common person and the resident who was not Hawaiian who well, after the Pash case came down. We put an end to that. Mm -hmm. And now, even in areas where you find that all of the land at the shoreline is privately owned, if you drive along the shoreline, you will find a public access way that is opened up for time immemorial. So whether you go to poor Hawaiian community in Waimanalo or you go to wealthy community in Lanikai, you have a right to be there and there will be a trail access. And these rights are established because of Hawaiian traditional rights. If it wasn't for our rights, no one would have rights. This is why we have to think about the real reason why we preserve Hawaiian rights. It is not correct that Hawaiian rights are only for those with Hawaiian blood, with the cocoa. Mm -hmm. That is not the case. But the public rights in this state are founded upon and established upon our people's rights, traditional custom and usage that still survive today. Well, I'm going to let you know that maybe on Kauai that's in place. I mean, here in Honolulu that's in place. But on Kauai, a few years ago, I was arrested with Liko Martin at Papa'a Bay for um, the property owner had closed off the beach access and we got arrested trying to access, you know, open up the access. The Old County Road is the name of the road. And he decided that that was his road and he blocked it. Well, the response of our county council was to create a bill that says it's a $1,000 a day fine if you block the access. And the result of that 
when that bill passed was that the private landowner now can pay our county $365,000 and keep the access closed because there's no enforcement for the law to open the access. So on Kauai, we don't, absolutely don't have a lot of access. You it's know, really horrible. Vigilant. You need to be yeah. vigilant about it. Mm -hmm. And my sense is, is that you need to raise it in litigation. We I have, don't really um, think that the county council could possibly override the decision of the court in PASH mm -hmm. because the counties are have less authority mm -hmm. in this area mm -hmm. to legislate or to, to uh, dictate than the county council. They're, the county council is the lowest of the sovereigns. Above them is the state and then the federal government. But it does not seem to me that that decision is in line with PASH. It should be overturned. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we have going on. We, Many of us have you know, been fighting that for quite a few years now. And so um, I'm hoping that, you know, should you get into office, we'll be looking at our neighbor islands as well to ensure that those rights will be enforced. Um, right now, what we have really happening on Kauai is that absolutely money and money and power is the home rule. The people are not able to, they have, the people of Kauai do not have control of their own community. And um, currently we are slated for 9,000 more units on the island with no infrastructure improvements. So we've got some really big problems facing us on Kauai as we do on each of our islands. The good news is Hawaiians always rise to the occasion and especially Hawaiian women and I absolutely believe it is very <laughs> yes but you know that the Hawaiian culture and the Hawaiian system was matrilineal so it's most appropriate mm -hmm. that women assume leadership positions mm -hmm. but it doesn't in any way diminish the role that our men not play. at all it just changes it mm -hmm. um, in the Hawaiian culture a woman's son was taught to fish by her brother rather than by her husband and mm -hmm. his family. It does have an impact. But I think you're right. I think we need to take a look at how we're going to ensure that rights that we secured mm -hmm. historically mm -hmm. mean something today. Mm -hmm. You know, if we don't use our rights, they become something written on a paper. Mm -hmm. We have to always assert our rights. And it sounds like there's a calling to do that right now on access issues mm -hmm. on the island of Kauai. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's something that needs to be looked at, I think. I think I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the new action that's going to happen. Have you talked with your OHA trustee from Kauai? Uh, no, I have not. I have, uh, I visited Maybe the Office of, Hawaiian Fair, of, 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 Office of Hawaiian Affairs for the first time yesterday here in Honolulu. Um, and I will be going to visit Mr. Dan Ahuna. He's quite a nice man. I see him running on the beach yeah. with his family all the time. You know, Dan is a good guy. Mm -hmm. He really has the interests of Kauai at heart. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed meeting him, also his mother and family. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like if there's something that can be done, I feel that Dan would be the kind of OHA trustee that would be not only interested, but committed to it. Well, I also want to extend an invitation to you to come actually into the studio and be live on the air, and maybe you're coming to Kauai sometime, and people can call in and ask the questions of you. I think, you know, you're very accessible. I think that, that people would enjoy having those conversations with you on the air on our show, Songs you know, of I'm Sovereignty. I'm really happy to get this invitation, and I am hoping to come back to mm -hmm. Kauai. I just loved it when we were there. And I was so disappointed our Hawaiian Chamber of Commerce had invited the OHA candidates to come to an event in the evening, but most of the candidates said no. And it's because when you have an event in the evening, the candidates have to fly. It's very costly. Mm -hmm. Rent a car, get a hotel room mm -hmm. to stay overnight. It's always easier on candidates, at least the Hawaiian ones, if you could do something in the middle of the day, at least that way they can come in do the event and go home mm -hmm, rather mm -hmm. than, you know, paying the big money mm -hmm. for the hotels in Kauai. Well, maybe we can create something so that it'll be a little more user friendly for you to come and visit Kauai. Well, I love Kauai. Yeah. I love Kauai. You know my family. I know your Kauai. family. Mm -hmm. my, my father's family, the Trask Ohana, mm -hmm. for many, many years uh, called Kauai, our home, mm -hmm. the area of Monua'a, Makai and all the way up that whole Ahupua'a 
was under the name of Trask. And if you go to the cliffside, you will see the little burial that belongs to our family. Mm -hmm. All of the names on the headstones are Trask. Mm -hmm. My grandparents left when our family was dispossessed of their lands. Mm -hmm. It's the same story for most Hawaiians. Yes. Uh, during that colonial period, our family lost all of our lands on Kauai. But my ohana is still there. I still have cousins, and I always enjoy going there. And if you talk with us on my father's side, everyone will say that we are Kauai. Even though for many generations we have lived on Oahu or the Big Island, the Trask family, when asked, where are you from, They'll say always Kauai. responds, Kauai, Moloa'a. Well, I sure hope you're going to come visit us and come be a guest on our show. And I just want to say mahalo again. It's great to see you again. Actually, the last time I saw you was at um, Uncle Arthur's um, spreading of his ashes from up yes. above Kauai Lagoons. That was a great event. Wasn't we it? had a lot of fun yeah. in his, and it was really a, a wonderful event. Yeah. And I think about that a lot. A lot, I think about Uncle Arthur. So thank you so much, Mimi Thank Milani. you so much. And we'll see you soon on Kauai. Yeah. Yeah. Come back, come home.